In this video, we're going to be exploring how we can use the time it module to time small snippets of code in Python. And first of all, I'm going to import time and import random. These are the modules that I will be using for all of my examples. But let's jump right into how we can use time it. And to demonstrate how it works, I'm first going to try to find out what's different between random integer and random dot random because both of these produce random numbers. One produces a float in the range of zero to one, while the other one produces a random integer in the range that we provided. But which one of these are faster? Because let's pretend in our program, we don't really care what the numbers are. We just want to generate some random numbers. So of course, let's opt in for the faster version. Anyway, that's what we want to try to benchmark so that we can make sure our code is optimized. And to do this, I'm first going to create a variable called rand int time. And this is going to be of type float, which is going to equal time it dot time it. And here we need to pass in a statement and you can pass it in as a string or as a function without any parameters. That's up to you. But for the first examples, I'm going to be passing it in as a string. So we want to test random dot rand int in the range of one or actually zero to one. That is the line of code that we want to test for. And we do need to provide some setup because this line of code is going to be independent of our entire script. So it's not going to know that we have random already imported. So with the setup, we can define that, okay, we need to import random before we run this test. And the setup will only be used once and then it's going to perform the test 1 million times by default. And we also have a timer parameter and this allows you to specify your own timer. But by default, this is set to the performance counter, which comes from the time module. And I'm not going to dive deep into what kind of timers you can use. If you know what the timers do, great, you can specify your own, but I just want to show you that you can change that in case you want to, and that the default is set to the performance counter but we won't really be using that in any of these examples since it's the default, I'm just going to remove it. And finally, we have a parameter called number, which allows you to define how many times you want this test to run. So by default, it's set to 1 million, but in case it's a slower function, you can set it to something lower, such as 100,000, in case you want to run it less times. Anyway, once you use this time it method, it's going to return to you a float of the total time it took to run this snippet of code 100,000 times, or at least in this case, where we defined it to be 100,000. So if we were to actually print this result, and I'm just using some formatting here, you'll see that in the console, we're going to get the time back that it took to run this snippet of code 100,000 times. But let's also compare this to what I mentioned earlier, because right here we did random.randint, but I want to see whether random.random would be faster. So right below, I'm going to duplicate that and instead, I'm just going to call this random time. And instead of random dot rand int, we're going to do random dot random. And everything else is going to stay the same. But of course, if we want to see the results for random time, we're going to have to print that. So now we have something that prints the random int time and something that prints the random time. So let's run this once again. And what we will see here is that random was significantly faster than random integer. And I just want to stress that time it should be used strictly for small snippets of code. If you need to time a larger code base or an entire script to find out which parts can be optimized or which parts are performing too slow, I definitely recommend you import something such as the profile module because this will give you better insights on your entire script while using time it is very good for small snippets of code such as random.randint, which is literally one line of code. So you can see exactly whether it's faster or not. And another thing I want to mention is that when you are using time it, it temporarily turns off garbage collection, which can make independent timings more comparable. But garbage collection can also play an essential part in your timings. So you're going to have to look into that, whether your code is actually being timed correctly without garbage collection enabled. And our next example is going to be using functions that require a bit more setup, such as if you have some variables that you need to pass in as arguments. And one example is going to be this function here that generates a list of random numbers. What if we want to pass in an amount? 
and I'm going to be using a list for this. And I'm actually getting some syntax highlighting because this does return to us a list of float. So I'm just going to change that real quick. This will be float and this will be float. And what I'm going to be comparing here is whether it's faster to use a list comprehension or to just use a normal for loop. So I'm going to go right under this function and define the same thing in its list comprehension form. And we need to change this to float as well. I don't know what I was doing there. Anyway, right now we have two functions that we can actually test because I called them here and here. And if we run that, we're not going to get anything because it returns numbers, but it doesn't print anything. And that's my fault because I wrote this all in Jupyter Notebook. So we will print those two. And what we should get back are two lists that contain five random numbers each. Anyway, that's what we're generating. Let's see which one is faster and how we can time it. And I'm going to remove these print statements. So down here, we're going to define the amount to be of type int, and that's going to be equal to 20. And that's what we want to pass in to each one of these. And it's true that it does shadow these. So I'm just going to quickly change this to amount n for amount numbers, I don't know. And first of all, we're going to go down here and we're going to create something called list time, which will be of type float. And that's going to equal time it dot time it. And the statement is going to be our function call. So I'm just going to copy this up here and paste it in as a string. Since you can't directly call it inside here, it's not going to allow you to do that or it's just not going to function correctly. We're going to have to pass it in as a string. And instead of saying amount of type integer, we're going to say that the amount is equal to the amount number. And we can even print that. So list time. And if we run this, we're going to get this error here that this was never closed and that's absolutely true. But if we run it again, we're also going to get that list generate random is not defined, which is quite annoying because we need to import list generate random. And even when we do that, we also need to create amount n because once again, this is isolated from our script. So it has no information about amount n or about our function. So one solution to this is to use globals. And here we can define the globals to be our globals. So now it's going to be able to see that we have this function defined and that we have the amount defined. And this time when we run it, it's actually going to be able to give us the time back as a float. But of course, let's do it for both of them. So list time and comp time, and it's the same thing. We're still referring to our globals so it can see everything inside our script. Then I'm just going to format the result nicely. So print and print. So we will get the list time and the list comprehension time back respectively. Now, if we run this, we should see that amount is not defined because I did that silly thing earlier to change this to amount n. And I did not do that for this one. I'm still getting used to trying to use Jupyter Notebook to take notes when I'm teaching the videos. So I will keep this in mind for the next video that if I change anything, I need to remember that I'm doing it also in my script. Anyway, let's run this. And this time we should get back both of the times that it took to run these functions 1 million times. And in this case, the list comprehension wasn't really that much faster. But it is worth mentioning that if you were to change to a different Python version, such as 3.10, you might get different results. In this example, it was considerably faster. So when you time your code, there's a lot of factors to keep into account. I'm not going to dive into all of that in this video, but I just want to show you how time it works because it is pretty cool for timing small snippets of code. But always check which Python version you're using. And if you change anything, always test again because Python 3.11 took away a lot of the optimizations that we had in Python 3.10. Now they're just built into Python, which means the difference between using a for loop and a list comprehension in 3.11 might be completely irrelevant. But moving on to the next part of this video, and that's how we can repeat this test several times, because right now we ran it 1 million times. But what if we want to do that five times? Well, we can do this in a for loop, but there's a much more convenient way of doing that. And I'm just going to remove everything besides the imports. And here I'm going to create a variable called random integer times. And that's going to be of type list of float. Because what we're going to use is going to return to us a list of the fastest times. So here we need to type in time it dot repeat. 
As you can see, we have something that's built into the time it module that allows us to repeat the test. And the statement is going to be equal to random.randint from the range of 0 to 1. The setup is going to be set to import random. And I clicked on something I shouldn't have. And then we can define how many times we want to repeat this test. And I'm going to set that to five, which I believe is also the default. So now we can print random times or random int times. And what we will get back is that I didn't close this again because I'm so used to the code editor helping me out with closing parentheses that when I do this in a string, I keep on forgetting. But this time, if we run it, we should get five times back. And it's usually a good idea to use repeat because sometimes your computer is going to be using a lot of resources to do something. So the times aren't always going to be consistent, but using repeat can help minimize the risk of your code being timed during some inconvenient time for your computer. Anyway, now we got those five times back. So let's do the same thing for the random times. And I'm just going to create it immediately below. And it's going to do the exact same thing, except it's going to use the random method which at this point we know is much faster. But now let's display the results and find out which one is faster. So I'm going to use my print statements once again, and I'm rounding them to four decimal places. But this time you should note that I'm using the min method, which is provided by Python. And that's going to give us back the minimum. And the documentation recommends we use the minimum because that essentially tells us how fast our computer is capable of running this snippet of code. And I'm just going to edit in that documentation right here. So pause the video if you're curious about learning more regarding that. Otherwise, I'm just going to run the program. So if we run this, we're going to get two times back, except this time I would consider it more consistent since we actually ran the test 5 million times. And if we run this again, we should get similar results. As you can see, they are much more consistent than when we ran it one time. And finally, I just want to mention one more thing, and that is that if you have a function that doesn't really take any parameters, such as this calculate function here, it's quite easy to time. All you have to do is pass in that function without the parameters, of course, and that will give you back the time. So if we do this, as you can see, the only thing I passed into the statement was calculate and nothing else. We didn't have to import globals or we didn't have to do any setup because this is a perfect reference to everything that we have in the script. And if we run that, it's going to give us the time back as well. So that's another way to do it that might be even more simple. It's just to create a wrapper or a function that you actually want to time your snippets of code inside. So instead of using setup and globals, here you can say random int implementation, and you can just do it here, random int, I will say zero to one. Then we can just remove this line of code here and pass in the random int implementation. And if we run this, we should get the time that it took to run that 1 million times. Anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. Do let me know what you think about the time it module, whether you use it or whether there's something else you use to time small snippets of code. And with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.